the Lakers and the Mavericks. And watching the game, I think people saw how fast LeBron James looked. LeBron James in the second quarter of that game had 10 points straight. And he was doing a really good job of facilitating, but also going and attacking the basket. He looked like in game seven mode. And in a scrimmage, especially, it's like a preseason game. So not all the guys are putting their full effort in or not playing the full amount of minutes. So seeing LeBron James do that was also allowing me to see where I think the Lakers could be. Now, Alex Caruso didn't play. He hurt he hurt his back. He had a back contusion from what I heard. And again, he's going to be fine by the 30th from what it sounds like from reports. And that's important because they play the Clippers in the 30th and he needs to be healthy. Now the Clippers are without Patrick Beverly and Montrez Harrell. And and their scrimmage, Paul George led them in scoring, and Kawhi Leonard had nine points. But when you look at these scrimmages especially, it's not really a big deal to see the points these guys put up. It's to see how they look physically and how they look going into their moves, right? So Devin Booker in the Phoenix Suns scrimmage against the Utah Jazz where they won by 23 points. He had 13 points in 20 minutes. That's very efficient. You look at the Lakers, right? LeBron James played about 15, 20 minutes, and he had 12 points. So that's also important to see that what also they're bringing to the table. Now, when I watched the Lakers, too, what I saw was a little bit of problematic defense at times. I watched LeBron James specifically, and this is not to hate on LeBron James because I am a big LeBron James fan, so there's a little bit of bias in terms of me being positive toward him. But the one thing I did see specifically was a little too much switching and not enough staying on your man. So when a guy would come off a screen – and they would throw it over to another guy, and they would get a pin-down screen. So what a pin-down screen is basically when the guy throws the ball to his teammate and a guy on the same team screens behind, hits the, the player in the back of the screen, and the guy's able to loop around it and get a shot at a layup, right? And a lot of times those pin-downs happened or down screens happened. LeBron James would just switch it. And I would prefer him to be on a guy like Doncic more than having a guy like Kuzma on him. And when I watch that, Johnson would just get by him every time. And the one thing everyone should watch when they watch a guy like Doncic, watch how he uses his body. When the games start up, this is why I think Dallas will be a lot more dangerous in the playoffs than people think. If Dallas can somehow squeeze that sixth seed in the West, they'll beat the Nuggets. I think the same thing with the Rockets. I don't know what the problem is with the Nuggets, but I just don't see Jamal Murray as consistent enough, right? But I like Luka Doncic in terms, in terms that he's not just a great passer and scorer just because he's just a gifted scorer. It's how he knows how to score. Right, he can shoot, but when he goes to the rim, he's very crafty by using his body, using his shoulders, using his size, and he has really good touch. If you go through that game, I, I can put out a point in the second quarter. He drove through three guys, then he bumped Dwight Howard and shot a little right-hand floater. That's stuff that he does consistently. And if you're a basketball player and you're learning from that, it's always about what he's doing with his body to get himself in position to get the ball in the basket. You watch LeBron James. LeBron James really impressed me with, with how athletic he looked. And the thing is, what people don't realize, when you don't make the playoffs the previous year and then you get a four-month layoff, you practically had about a year off of basketball. And he's also not playing as many minutes he used to play. They're not asking as much of him in terms of minutes right now. And as a result of that, he's able to get into the, te- the defense more. If you watch the second quarter specifically, and I encourage everyone to go watch the second quarter against the scrimmage, just watch how he attacks the teeth of the defense. He gets in, he lays the ball in his left hand, lays the ball in his right hand. He gets a steal, and he blows by everyone and dunks it. He's 35, and he's beating everyone down the court. And for the Clippers, that's a little bit scary for them to see that, because if LeBron James is fully motivated and fully rested, they're not going to beat them. I, I, I hate to say it to the Clippers because you don't know if how Patrick Beverly is going to come back from his family matter and he has to go through all the quarantine, right? And so what, as people don't, who maybe don't know this, if you leave the bubble and you don't get tested every day you're out, you have to do a 10-day quarantine. But if you get tested every day you're out, you get a four-day quarantine. So Zion Williamson will get a four-day quarantine and he should be back by their first game hopefully Patrick Beverly is too but you have to make sure he's back by the 26th because the game's on the 30th right so you have four day quarantine then he's gonna be able to play or you have to get him back earlier than that because maybe he has to have a day of practice I'm saying that the the fact is when I watch those scrimmages especially 
there were glimpses of obviously the greatness, but Paul George is something that intrigued me. He looked very fresh. And I understand it's a scrimmage again, right? Scrimmages, again, aren't necessarily that important. But it is important for the players to get their rhythm back. And getting their rhythm back is important because they have big games coming up. And when you have a four-month layup, you can lose your rhythm. And when you play against live contact, it's not the same as playing just by yourself in your driveway. So having that in that in its own right is going to get the Clippers an advantage too. Because if Paul George can play like the Paul George of OKC, the, the Clippers also are a much more dangerous team. Now, I think that Anthony Davis and LeBron James are the better duo, but – Kawhi Leonard can guard LeBron James better than anyone else in the league. And if Paul George can be a legitimate second option and not fade away in the playoffs like he's done before, you can just look at the numbers. Look at his series against Portland. He shot 30-something percent from the floor, and he averaged about 23 points a game in that series, right? And the previous year, he shot two for 15 against Utah in game six when Russell Westbrook put up 45 points. If you like that clip, like and subscribe to hear more from Shred Takes podcast show and be in touch for more stuff coming up weekly.